In preloaded bolted joints, the bolt preload presses the mating components towards each other, which creates contact pressure between them. When there are external loads acting on the assembly, such as bearing loads or internal pressure, or if the components are trying to move apart due to thermal expansion, all such loads will affect the preload in the bolt. This happens due to the transfer of forces between the bolt and nut and the rest of the assembly. All these forces balance each other out and maintain a static state. When we develop numerical models for such setup, all the components are individual parts and we need to define how the components interact with each other so they can transfer forces between them. Such elements that transfer forces between two different parts are called as connections and the nature of connections chosen directly affects the accuracy of these force calculations. ANSYS Mechanical provides several different options for defining such connections. Three of the commonly used options are the contact connections, the joint connections and the beam connections. Each connection type offers different options that allows the analyst to juggle between accuracy and efficiency of calculating the forces and moments. The objective of this lesson is to learn how to identify the necessary connection type for the model or the application that we are working on. While the choice of connection type depends on the objective of the analysis, it also depends on the way the bolt is modeled. Modeling bolts using solid elements and representing all the connections using frictional contacts is the most accurate way of modeling bolted joints. However, this can be a very expensive affair, especially when there are multiple bolts in large assemblies. This is because each bolt is made of multiple solid elements. Each element is made of multiple nodes and each node has three degrees of freedom. This increases the number of calculations that are to be performed to find the solution. When the threads are included, a very fine mesh is needed to capture such detail and this increases the computational time exponentially. Due to this reason, we often make simplifying assumptions to reduce the computational cost without compromising the engineering accuracy required for the application. For instance, in most cases, the stripping of bolt threads is not relevant as the tensile or shear failure of bolt shank is most likely to happen prior to that. In all such cases, one can get rid of threads and use a bonded contact connection in place of frictional contact to represent threaded regions. By doing so, one can reduce the number of elements and the bonded contact is less expensive compared to frictional contact, which provides additional savings. Similar simplifications are made to both bolt representation and the connections based on the objective of the study. For instance, earlier we have seen that a bolt can be represented in two ways. One is using solid elements where the threads may or may not be included and the other is using the beam elements which is a more abstract version that does not include bolt head and threads. If we decide to use beam element representation, then we are presented with two more options. The first being modeling the bolt as a line body in the CAD file and the second option is to skip this step during geometry preparation stage and simply use a beam connection in ANSYS Mechan. This is identical to using a line body but it involves very little pre-processing effort. So coming back to the discussion on connections. How are the connections influenced by the choice of bolt representation? In case of solids, the interaction happens between two phases. So we use surface to surface connections and the forces are transferred between the scope surfaces. In case of line bodies, since the bolt does not carry any faces, we use vertex to edge or face type connections so the distribution of force can be concentrated. So the choice of connections and representation of bolts can influence each other and therefore they become central to the discussion on developing the models for bolted joints. But how do we decide between solid and beam elements? Solid elements can support most realistic connections 
and they provide the most accurate distribution of stresses both in the bolts and the surrounding components. Beam elements support only bonded connections and stresses calculated are reliable but they are not as accurate as the solid elements. However, beam elements take only a fraction of the computational cost in comparison to solid elements and the accuracy of results is reasonable for most analysis. So we must ask ourselves, what is the objective of our study and what level of detail or accuracy are we seeking from the analysis? Once we answer these questions, we can make decisions on selecting the appropriate elements for bolts and their connections. Let's look at a few examples, study their objectives, answer these questions and draw the modeling conclusions based on them. Let's start with an engine gasket. The gasket is sandwiched between the engine head and the engine body. It's in a compressed state due to the preload in the bolts that holds this assembly together. The contact pressure developed between the gasket and the other parts seals the combustion chambers and prevents leakage of engine oil and coolant into them while maintaining maximum compression pressure. It's common to perform simulations on such systems to study if the bolt preload can create enough contact pressure to seal the cylinders and also to see if both the bolts and other parts are able to withstand the harsh mechanical and thermal loads. A requirement for such models is to measure the contact pressure in the gasket, the preload in the bolt in the presence of external loads, and accurate stress distribution in both the bolts and the surrounding parts. A beam connection can cater the first two requirements, but it may not be suitable for the third requirement. So in this case, we'll need to use solid elements to model bolts and connect them to the rest of the assembly using bonded contacts at threaded locations and frictional contacts elsewhere. If you are only working on picking the right gasket and a bolt preload that can maintain the seal performance, then we can use beam connections to model the bolt and its connection which will reduce the computational cost. Since beams are very accurate at transferring forces, we won't lose any engineering accuracy either. This is one example of picking the appropriate bolt representation and connections based on the objective of analysis. Now let's look at the case of washers and see how to pick bolts and connections in their case. Washers are used for many reasons, including distributing the preload over larger area, to prevent bolt loosening, to act as insulator and isolators, and even to protect mating surfaces from corrosion. In designs where washers have a mechanical role, let's see how their role can influence our modeling decisions. Flathead washers are simple metallic washers that are flat. These are typically used to distribute the bolt preload over larger surface to protect mating parts from damage. In such cases, one can imprint the washer shape on top of the mating part and use beam connection scope to this surface. This way, the preload is uniformly distributed over the washer area. By using beam connection scope to imprints, we can avoid using solid elements on both the bolt and the washer. In case of well washers, they have a curvature, so when the bolt is tightened, they deform and provide additional axial force to increase the friction between the bolts and the mating surface. This is one way of preventing bolt loosening during operation. If we wish to model this system, then we need to model the washer as a separate solid body, use frictional contact between the bolt head and the washer, and use bonded contacts at threaded locations. Another case of washers are the insulating washers that are used for insulating the bolts from thermal or electrical activity in the mating parts. In this case, the washer must be modeled as separate body due to the different electrical and thermal properties. The bolt may be modeled using solid elements if the movement of washer is of interest or it may be modeled using beam connections if the movement of washer is not prominent. Finally, let's look at bonded sealing washers. 
These are typically made of rubbers and are used for sealing bolt holes or to dampen the vibrations. In this case, the distribution of preload over the washer must be accurate, so a surface-to-surface -surface connection is needed. Therefore, bolts must be modeled using solid elements. Bonnet contacts can be used at thread locations, but frictional contacts are needed between the bolt head and the washer. Let's move on to another example. In case of overhead mounts, the objective is to use enough number of bolts that are spaced adequately so they can support the hanging load. In this case, the bolts usually make up tension joints and are not loaded close to their proof loads. In such cases, the bolts can be modeled using beam connections. However, if there are bolts that make up shear joints, the overhanging load should not result in sliding of the shear joint. In that case, the bolt must be modeled using solid elements. Bonded contact may be used at threaded locations, but frictional contacts must be used elsewhere. One last example that's worth discussing is the role of bolts and preload in large rotating equipment. These assemblies undergo strong vibrations and are susceptible to dynamic instabilities typically studied under rotor dynamics. Preloaded bolts are often used to reduce vibrations between the parts and the amount of preload can directly impact their natural frequencies. So, it's common to use simulations to study the natural frequencies of such assemblies under various preloads. Since the stresses are not of significance, it is recommended to use beam connections for bolts to reduce the computational cost. The natural frequencies are calculated based on the overall structure stiffness, so using beam connections would not reduce the required accuracy. All these examples show how an analyst must understand the objective of their study and then decide their modeling strategy accordingly.